Good morning, everybody. My name is Maya the King, and why do today what you could put off till tomorrow? Well, today is yesterday's tomorrow. Now, today we're taking a look at a game just released on Steam early this morning called Cafe Owner Simulator, a game that is not released in early access, at least at the time of the recording, and selling for 19 American dollars. Now, I know, I know, there's a bunch of these simulator games out there, and if you've played one, then you've played them all. They're not masterpieces or works of art or anything, but sometimes they can be fun. Well, half the time I miss these games coming out, but not this time. I'm here, ready to take a look at this game and give my thoughts on the simulator game genre, alright? Now, this game was developed by Second Reality and published by Rock Game SA. So, as we've all come to expect with these games, they're pretty addictive little games that somehow, despite lacking quality in a lot of ways, they still manage to pull us in and get us to play them for the next few weeks. So, is this one going to be the same? Or is it going to be better? Is it going to be new? Different? Well, let's find out together, starting with the positives. But before I go into that, let me just say this. Have you ever played House Flipper? Because this game is basically that, but instead of flipping houses, you're running a restaurant. What does that mean? It means exactly what you think it means. So, first off, considering the quality, the overall length of average gameplay, and everything else this game offers, the first positive is that price tag. It's very appropriate. You can tell that they know their market, and they know how, they, how much they should ask for a game like this. So the first th good thing that I noticed was that it was properly priced. By the way, if I stumble a little bit during this, I apologize. It's very early in the morning when I'm doing this. I've just finished my coffee. I'm still not fully awake yet, but the game released early, so I have to do this early. The next positive here is that unlike a lot of these games, it has a story. Yeah, that's right. This simulator game has a bit of a story. See, you're the son of Mr. Potato Head, and he was a great restaurant owner who wanted to open a second store. Then he asked for a loan from this mafia boss who happened to be good friends of his back in college. Then he got too sick to run the business and had to close it down. Now he suddenly gives you $50,000 so you can open your own restaurant. I mean, it's nonsensical and makes absolutely no sense and is filled with plot holes, but hey, at least they tried, right? Next up is the obvious length and, dare I say, even replayability. While the game doesn't exactly have a lot of big choices you can make that will change how you play every time, it does have that addictive quality that makes you want to return every year or so to play it again simply because of how soothing, casual, and non-stressful it is. I still come back every few months or every year or so to play the House Flipper game or to play Power Wash Simulator. Even though there's no choices that you can make, even though there's not a whole lot that you can change about it, you still come back to it every now and then because you just want to play one of those simple casual games, you know what I mean? You understand if you play these kind of games, and this one has that in, in spades. Then you've got the management of your restaurant. It's kind of cool. Uh, you know, you can hire a janitor to clean up for you, or hire chefs to cook for you, or a cashier to talk to the customers for you. And what's more, they actually work, they cook, they take orders, they clean. And I didn't notice a whole lot of problems with them while I was playing, which was fantastic. This is great. It means that when you hire these NPCs to work for you, they actually do it for you. Like, they do it efficiently, effectively, the way you would expect them to. I didn't notice any problems with it, and that's just a, that's a good thing for a game like this. The gameplay loop is about what you'd expect from a house flipper clone. Hold down buttons to replace windows, paint walls, purchase and place furniture, mop up puddles, rake leaves, etc, etc. But you can also expand your little cafe with more rooms and more stories. You can choose your menu, purchase in bulk the raw foods that your chefs are going to need so they can cook the food that you can place on your menu. Overall, it wasn't really that bad, in my own opinion. It's just simple enough and just fun enough to keep you casually entertained while you're doing something else like watching TV or whatever, which is what I like to do. And last, and probably not the least, is the music. It's pleasant, seemingly well done, and overall fits with the jaunty, casual theme of the game. Its ambiance is kind of all over the place, along with the rest of the sound effects. You know, sometimes they're there, sometimes they're not, sometimes they sound good, sometimes they don't, but hey, at least the music is good. But now, and I really hope you stuck around, because now I gotta go into the bad things about this game. So, the first more obvious flaw is the graphics and the art. The game looks worse than Skyrim, and that game came out like 10 years ago. It's pretty ugly. Now, for most games, if the gameplay is good enough, I can easily ignore bad graphics, because in my own personal opinion, graphics don't make the game. Graphics aren't the end all. The game can look the most beautiful, doesn't mean it's a good game. You can't sacrifice other qualities just so you can make it look good and hope that... I mean, it's like getting a present. A present looks really nice on the outside, but if you open it and there's nothing in there, you're still going to be disappointed. So, even though the graphics might look like, you know, duty, it's still not one of those things that I consider a requirement for a reason for it to be, you know, bad. But I still needed to make mention of the fact that it looks like that because, well, that's the point of this video. The next thing is the stability. 
The game is kind of super broken right now. I mean, sometimes clicking on certain buttons does nothing, and I'll give you a few examples. The game wanted me to open up my email for a quote-unquote mission, but when I go to hit the button to accept the mission, nothing happened at all. I, I have no idea if it was broken or if I was missing something because the game didn't tell me anything. So that was really depressing. I really wanted to go do this and, you know, try to see if I could get some extra money and experience points. But it just, it, it wasn't working. Or when I go to click out of something or to pick up a m menu item or to move some furniture, it just didn't work. I'd have to get out of it and go back into it several times to get it to work. The game would also skip every now and then, like freeze. It would freeze, and then your, car your your model would move, but it wouldn't show you moving, you know, so you'd kind of teleport, like that kind of skipping, you know what I mean? Like it was skipping frames. It would also freeze, but that only happened once. And the absolute biggest flaw ever, the save game feature did not work for me. Is it broken for everybody, or was it just broken for me? I don't know, but my hour and a half of gameplay wasn't saved, and now, if I want to play again, I have to start all over again. And I'd already cleaned and repaired the whole restaurant, I had it, you know, I had cooks, and I had a kitchen, and I had tables, and everything was going great, and now I gotta do it all over again? I mean, that, that's a deal breaker for me. Then you've got the disconnect with the UI and how it was poorly organized. The keyboard shortcuts either weren't working very well or they were just very weird and awkwardly placed for my hands and just overall the user interface and the stability of this game are absolute shite. Then you've got some aspects of the gameplay that are just wrong. Like at first the tutorial was doing pretty good at teaching me things. Took a little trial and error because it was worded badly so I had to do something I wasn't thinking about doing because the, tor the tutorial wording kind of had me guided in the wrong direction. But for the most part, I was able to figure it out until it gave me the next tutorial right after the last one telling me to hire a cashier. The problem? I couldn't hire a cashier until I was level 5. And after following the tutorial so far, I had just gotten to level 3. So I was thinking, well, okay, I must gain levels pretty fast then to keep up with the tutorial. So I'll just keep playing the game and serving the customers. One hour later, and I only made it halfway past level 4, and that tutorial page is long gone because I already served the 20 customers that it wanted me to serve in that time frame. So it just skipped that tutorial, I guess. It wasn't game-breaking, but it sure was annoying and gave me a bad premonition about the future of doing the tutorial and playing the game. Another aspect of the gameplay that was annoying is the homeless people they have there. They will literally show up and cause havoc for no reason. They kept showing up and breaking my windows. The game barely made mention of being nice to them, but I never once had the opportunity except for one guy in the very beginning when I first got my restaurant. After that, they just show up, break my windows, and run away, not even giving me a chance to be nice and fix this. I mean, what? Come on. Then you've got random rats and cockroaches showing up even though I'm keeping the place fairly clean and keeping all the hygiene appliances that I need. My cafe was basically just getting infestations for no reason. I mean, is this broken or was it a badly designed game mechanic? I honestly don't know. But I mean, they mentioned keeping the place clean and making sure there's hygiene, like a sink there to keep hygiene up and whatnot. And I did that. I mean, maybe, maybe the game devs don't know this, but rats and cockroaches only show up when there's a lot of food left around. And I was keeping my dumpster empty, I was keeping my trash can empty, and I was cleaning up after myself all the time. So why were they showing up? So... That, in my opinion, it's either broken or it was a really bad design decision by the game devs. So yeah, I think those are the only bad things about the game big enough that I should make mention of that are worth mentioning at all. So overall, in conclusion, I really don't know everybody. Uh, is this game decent? I guess it is. I mean, I don't like what it did to me, making me waste over an hour of gameplay because the save didn't work, screwing up my tutorial learning experience, the unstable gameplay and confusing nature of having to manage, clean, cook, and serve in my restaurant, and I just wasn't really enjoying myself. And here's the worst part, I was. I was enjoying myself at first. I was slowly getting into it. I was slowly like, you know what, I might have to serve the customers myself because I can't hire a cashier yet, but I'm actually still kind of enjoying myself. I guess I'll just have to build my way up and, 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 and you know, really just pick myself up from the ground and become something awesome. And then it broke and I couldn't save and then everything went to hell after that. I mean, technically, the game does more right than it does wrong, but the things that it does wrong are game breaking. I mean, in my own opinion, it doesn't matter how good your game is if it keeps breaking. It's shoddy craftsmanship. It's a defective product. I mean, why shouldn't I request a new unbroken product or get a refund when the product you gave me is clearly broken? I mean, if I bought a chair from Walmart and opened it up at home only to find it missing two of its four legs, I'd either want it replaced or I'd want a refund. And I can't help but having that same feeling about this game. I don't know, guys. 
Is it a nice little simulator? Sure it is. Is it worth its asking price? Again, sure. Should you buy it? Well, that depends. Honestly, right now I'd say no. Give it a few weeks or a couple months and see if these developers care enough to get some patches out there to fix these game-breaking bugs, and then buy the game. But if you really love this kind of stuff and you're willing to risk it, then yeah, sure, it's not a bad little game. Technically, it does what it sets out to do, but I personally just don't feel like it's worth it at this point in time. I don't think it's worth the risk because of how broken it is. So the choice is up to you guys out there. Uh, feel like taking a risk on a genre you love? Then have at it, and I hope you have fun, and I hope you don't run into these same bugs. But if you don't have a lot of money to spare, and you're not too sure if you want to risk it on a game like this, then maybe holding off is the best choice. Alright? Alright, so that's, that's all the time I got for this episode, everybody. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and if you have any questions or concerns at all, please let me know in the comments down below. Thanks again for watching, and I can't wait to see you all again on my next adventure. So until then, I bid you all farewell.